Vikings Gaming Solo. My name is Rob, your solo gamer friend, and today we're going to play a game of Tiny Epic Vikings, published by Game of the Games and produced by Scott Alms. And this is the latest in the Tiny Epic series. The board is set up and almost ready for play. On the left we have the error map with the three errors, and we have the Raven token on top of the first error. The board in the center, which is the first board of the Tiny Epic series. Most of them come with cards, but this is the first published board within Tiny Epic, so it's unique. On the board we have our two C runs, two F runs, and two N runs. And we have 13 of the villages sitting on the village icons. And the icons that are covered by villages are with the ports for ships. Ships can't port at villages, and if you have the income, you can raid the village. To the right are three randomly selected gods out of the six that's within the game. And the first gar god we have is Freya, goddess of the hunt. She starts with the randomly selected F token. Then the next god is Odin, the Allfather, with the N run token. And then we have Nord, god of the seas, which is a C run token. Along the bottom here we have our my is my player map, where I have my six settlers three ships ready to build and two temples ready to build and I have my three resources on the number two track I have they're stacked I have food wood and iron and to the right we have we're going against the Automa which actually gets two groups so the Automa has the green player mat and then the red enemy mat which is the red mat flipped backwards and he gets red and green uh, I, he gets red and green tokens. He gets 12 settlers, 6 boats, and 4 temples. You take the remaining 2 boats and put them back in the box. And then on the right, you track his resources on the enemy map. And his, his wood, wheat, and iron are right here. And as they advance, they get special actions. Along with on the enemy map, whenever he loses a battle, it, whatever ruin is on that card, he gets to take that action on this map. And that's pretty much most of the setup. We got a few more things we got to do that I wanted to do on screen so you can see how it works. First, real simple, you collect the three middle island ruins. You shake them up and you drop one out, and it is the end run. So the end run will go to the Automa. And you put the other two runs back on the map. And you place the chieftain boat on the furthest to the left of the board which will go right here. So the chieftain boat starts on this track here at this location. He gets to the end run so you take the end run and you increase the gods for you that owns that run which is Odin by one. Anytime the run exchanges hands the God's Fury continues to increase by one. And you want high fury because those are points at the end of the game as long as you have the points to collect for it. And then I take my boat, and I can place my boat anywhere on the board as long as it's touching the edge. And so I don't want to compete immediately with the Automa, so I'm going to go ahead and go to this edge right here, and that's where I'm placing my boat to start the game. Also, the enemy gets to place two of their settlers on the island with the run they have. So right now they have influence on that island. And the only way you can get runs is if you have influence. Boats don't count as influence, they count as influence points, but they don't count as what the game calls boots on ground, which means if you don't have a temple or people on that island, you don't get that run, or you can lose that run if you um, abandon the island, you don't have anything there to control it. And now we have to select our favorite cards. You get a total of eight favorite cards, and you lay four on top and four on the bottom. And I'm just going to randomly draw eight of them right now. Replacing the remaining. The remaining to go back in the box they do not get replaced. And we have a C, two, two C runs, an N and an N run, and a F run here. And on the bottom, we'll have F run, a C, and an N run an F and an N run, and a C and a C run. So those are the cards that we get. And like I said, when they're won in battle, you do not get to replace them. So once you run out, they run out. And you can only have three cards at the most for the game. Now that that's done, now we take the Viking cards and we, deal, and we shuffle them, and then we deal them into five stacks of three. So I'm going to do that right now. That's three, two, 
three, four, five. I'm going to take the remaining and put them right here. Now I get to take four stacks, look at them, I draft one card for myself and give the other two cards to the Automa. So this is stack number one. When you look at the cards, to understand how to read a card, you understand the anatomy of a card. So the top part of the card is your battle action. Actions you can take to perform a battle. And some have like bonuses and some will cost you iron. The center of the card are actions you can take. You can either move your ship X amount of times. You can collect resources. You can move your settlers from one island to the next. And, the, and a few other actions that we'll cover when those cards come up. But right now the cards I'm looking at, I can collect resource. I collect three resources on one card. Two resources on another card. And I can move my ship up to three times. Now on the bottom of the card, the very bottom, are additional actions you can take if you meet the rune possession criteria. And as that, as that happens, we'll, we'll take those actions. So I want to move my ship first. I'm going to take the ship one that gives me a chance to move my ship. I'm going to give the Automa these two cards. Now I'm going to take another stack, look at it. And remember, I can only look at four out of the five stacks. And this one is all resources. The additional actions is to get more resources if I have two in rune stones. Or I can move one of my cells one island to the next if I have one C rune stone. And the other one is two resources, but I get additional four if I have three C, if I have three C rune stones in my possession. And I think I'm just going to get the one with get three resources. I'm not worrying about rune stones in possession at this time. I'm going to grab from here. This one gets me to allows me to take three resources, or I can move two settlers, one island, or move one settler up to two spaces following these routes here. Or I can do one settler. I think I'm going to take that because I get for two in run, no, for one in run stone, I can also move a boat. Now I get one more option. So whatever I don't select, I'm going to take this one here, which means these three go into the stack without me looking at them to the automa. And I do want to do some fighting, so I'm going to take this one because my fight value is 12. It's going to cost me two iron, but I let me make sure, yeah, because I don't have any fighters. So it cost me two iron, but it's almost a guaranteed win. So I'm going to take that because I do want to get one of these cards. My goal is to collect at least one card per era. Remember, you can only have three cards total, and you replace one as you take it. You take the cards that you gave to Yadam, and you shuffle them up because that, those will dictate his actions. So I'll shuffle them up. I want to shuffle things up. If you like what you see, if you like what Gaming Solo is uh, producing, please like and subscribe to the channel. And like I said, if you get any, uh, if you get the opportunity and you have some time, I know your time is valuable, put some comments in there. Let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and how I can do it better. And I really appreciate it. But I really appreciate your views and your subscriptions. And uh, it, it really, it's really humbling that you guys are watching what, the content that I'm producing because I definitely know it's not up to par with some of the other content creators out there. So it's truly appreciated. Thank you again. All right, so his cards are shuffled up. So you always get to go first. Normally your cards would be upside down in a multiplayer game, but because it's solo, it doesn't matter what the Automa sees in my hand. So I'm just going to lay my cards out and look at my options. And I think I was not paying attention to what kind of cards I gave the Automa. I probably gave him some strong battle cards. But I'm going to, my first action is, I think I'm going to, I'm going to save battle. I'm going to move my ship. I can move it up to three spaces, but I only need to move it one space because I'm going to move it to this village here. I'm going to raid the village for one ore because I'm in era one. So I get that village. Now when you get a village, you can spend it anytime you want, either during that turn or on another turn, as long as it's your turn. And then you can spend it on one of the village tracks within the era card. Or I can spend it on one of the god tracks. I spend on the god track, I increase that god's fury by two. But I'm going to play it over here, and I think I'm going to spend it on the resources. So I'm going to put it there, I'm going to collect two resources. So I'm going to get one wheat and one wood. I'm going to put them both up to three. And... Because it's a two-player game, because it's the Anima, you can only put two villages per slot. Same with the God Fury. So it kind of so you can't keep going to the same one over. Once the second village is there, it kind of locks you off from going there again. And so I've done that. I made my move. I'm going to place, because I had a movement times three. Whatever your movement times is, that's how many settlers you can put on the island. So I can put all three of my settlers on this island for three food. 
because it's one per settler. I'm going to get that run token of N. So before I do anything, I just want to increase Odin's Fury by one because he has an N token. I'm going to spin my three food down to zero. And that will end my turn because I don't have enough C Ruin Stones or all my cards that are, have already been played in order to take the additional action. Now we take the Automa's turn. We flip over his top card. And I'm going to put this up here a bit. And the Automa, actually I'm going to put it down here because we'll have to double stack sometimes. The Automa has an F Ruin Stone and they get to collect two resources. So on the resource track, I decide if it doesn't tell you what resources to get, then you just move them along from top to bottom equally. So I'm going to move the wood one, and this resource stopped on, or I doesn't matter if it stopped for each area you pass or stop on, you get to take the autumn's action. So on the first one, the autumn gets to move the chieftain's boat to wherever my closest boat is, and he gets to dislodge it from port. So he's knocked it out of port. I'm going to place my boat in this fjord here instead of this one. And now the chieftain's boat's here. I still have the influence because he does have boots on ground. His boat is worth two influence points if he gets boots on ground, but because I have three boots on ground, I still control the island. I have three influence. And then he gets to move the wheat up one. There's no actions for there. And he does not have a C runstone, so that ends his turn at that point. Now it's my turn. I want to, I can either move settlers or I can collect resources. I want to collect resources because. The good thing is if I have two in rune stones in play, I get to do the special action at the bottom, which I have this one and this one. So now I'm going to collect three resources. I'm going to collect two food and I'm going to collect two food and it'll cost me two iron to battle, so one iron. Two food, one iron. And because actually I'm going to take that back. I'm going to collect one food. And two iron because my special ability lets me collect. I'm really messing this up. I'm going to collect two iron and one wood. That's better. I should have thought that through because my special action gives me three food, so I'm back up to three on the track. So I'm good there now. I was messing that up, but I got it figured out. So now it's the Automa's turn. And the Automa gets to build. And so the Automa gets to build a boat, and the boat goes wherever the Chieftain's boat is. If there's a boat already there, then he goes clockwise until he finds an empty port. The Chieftain's boat does not count as an empty port, so his boat will go right here. I'm just putting it on top of the Chieftain's boat for now, showing he's there. And his special action is he gets to collect a resource, but I haven't seen that symbol, so I'm double checking so I understand it real quick. He gets to exchange a resource for another resource. So he gets a... No, he doesn't get to exchange. It's just... I'm sorry. He gets one uh, iron resource. So he goes up one on iron. Let me double check that. Yeah, iron. And there's no action for iron because there's no symbol there. I apologize. And now it is the my turn again. I'm going to do a battle. So... I'm going to take my card. Normally in a multiplayer game you turn upside down, but it's Automa, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to place my card here. It's going to cost me two iron to place that card. And I'm going to claim... I think I'm going to claim the two C's, only because I need to open up to the F and the N. So I'm going to do battle for two C's. The Automa takes one of his unflipped cards and places, and he flips. I have a 12... He has a 9, so I beat him. So I get these two seeds. I get two wood resource. Brings me to 5 on the wood. I will put that underneath there. Normally you turn your card upside down so nobody knows what you have, but like I said, it doesn't matter. The Automa lost. I'm going to put this in my thing. Now the Automa's battle card goes above his normal cards for two reasons. One is he still counts the runstone, but he still gets the same amount of actions I've taken. This battle does not count as an action. It counts as a as a response to my uh, battle. So he's responded to my battle. So since we did the battle, I won. He lost. He lost with an F runstone. So he gets to take the F runestone action on the card. And this says move all of your dock boats to an adjacent ford. So he has two dock boats. He gets moved to an adjacent. So and unfortunately, it's not a full. It's a ford. So 
he will move here and the chieftain boat stays because it's different. These are dock boats. So this boat that was docked here now moves uh, south to the F4. He still doesn't have boots on ground so he does not get control of that run stone yet. Flip a card. I was double checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. I apologize. He gets three more resources. He gets to move up on the resource track. means he moves one, his boat once. He follows along the chain. So he goes down here. So he's back with this boat. Still no boots on the ground, so the influence does not count. He moves one on the food track. There's nothing there. And he moves one more on the iron track. And he increases the God's Fury by one of whatever the tokens he owns the most of, which is the end token. So he goes up once. So Odin is up to three on the Fury track. Fury is good because there's more points at the end of the game. As long as you can get those points. Now it's my turn again. I get to move two. I can move two of my settlers one island or one settler up to two islands and I think I'm just going to because the way the boat is he can go back and forth I'm going to move one settler south to this island here I'm going to lay claim to this island I'll capture the sea run because I have boots on the ground but because I only needed one in run to take my special action I get to move my boat two spaces I'm going to move this boat just one from the forward to the dock and I'm going to put two more boots on the ground for two more wheat and now I have an influence of five there and two up there. I need to build more boats to get some influence in those areas to eventually build temples. And that ends my turn. So we flip over now. The Ottoman gets to move. He gets to place one of his settlers onto the map where he has his chieftain's boat, which is here. So he takes control of the F run. I took the C, moved up one. He takes the F. He gets to go one on the F run. So now Freya's fury is starting to elevate. And that ends. He lost F. So, yep, that ends the, uh, our turn. That ends the first era. So when we start the next area, we'll be at era two, which will get more cards, which is going to cost us more iron to capture villages. And I'll be right back for round two. All right, we're in era two, but I'm going to make a correction, a mistake I made. When a boat makes contact with the village from the enemy, they automatically get that village. They don't have to pay resources for it. So they would have captured this village when the green boat had sailed there. And they place on the first open slot on the air card, which means they get to place one settler on the location where the chieftain's boat was at. Chieftain's boat was up here, so they placed a settler here. And it didn't change much. Well, actually it did because the chieftain's boat was there. So they would have had three influence to my two influence. So that means they would have taken the end token back and it would increase Odin's fury by one to five, to four I mean. And then when he left, I would receive that token back again because I now had total influence, which would push Odin's fury to five. That's the only thing that would have happened, but none of the gameplay would affect anything else. So it was just moving, moving tokens around and collecting the points. And that is it for that. Now we can begin. I've already shuffled the cards, dealt them out, and selected my cards. So for error two, you do three stack. You do six stacks of three, and you go through five of those stacks, selecting yours, drafting your cards, and then just like the other one, you take the one you didn't look at and add it to the ones you gave to the Ottoman. I'll shuffle them up and put them here. So I have selected one resource card, three movement cards, and one build card. And so I think the first thing I want to do is I want to I want to go ahead and do a resource. I need an F run to get that additional ability, but I don't want to move my ship. I'm going to do a resource card. I want to collect three resource. I'm going to collect one food, one iron, and one wood. So that gives me a six wood, three food, and one iron. And I don't have very my fight my best fight cards are four with an F modifiers so I only have one F so the best I can get is five when I play that card right now unless something changes I get a couple F runs so getting a card this round may be difficult for me if I choose to do that Automa gets to go and he gets to move his ship three plus three to a C area to the C closest C run so it's going to be this right here he dislodges my boat 
because my boat was there. So I still have influence because he doesn't have boots on the ground, but my influence is from five to three now. And so he's sitting there, and he has an end run, which means he gets to place one of his settlers from his mat onto the board. So now the influence is tied. We have three each, so I still have control of the C run. So I don't have to worry about that, and that ends his turn. And now I get to... I gotta sell my boat again. I can do. I want to sell three. No. I'm trying to figure out where the influence is kind of it's, it's kind of hard right there right now because he one one change one addition could change it for him into his favor. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna take the chance. I'm gonna sell my boat. Two spaces. I'll save that three for later. I'm selling two spaces. I'm only going to move here. I'm moving into this dock. When you move into a dock with the enemy, you dislodge them and put them back on the player map. Just like when they dislodge you. Differences where you stay on the map, they come off the map. So I dislodged him. I had a movement of two. I only have one villager left. Settler. So I'm going to put that settler there. But now I have control because my influence is three to one. So I take the F run. So now the F run goes into my control, and that means we go up on Freya's Fury track to two. And now I get to, I have a C run, I have the C run, so that means I get to draw and replace a card from the stack with one of my cards. So I could draw a card here, and if I want, I can replace it with another card in my hand. And I think I want to replace this with this movement action because it only gives me combat of one. I guess a three move, but this gives me a combat of five plus a C modifier. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to just discard this card. It's now out of play. And that is my turn. Now it's Autumn's turn. He gets to place two of his settlers from the map to the island where he is at, which now gives him control. Gives him five to my three, so uh, took a chance and it, and it didn't pay out. And that means he t gets the C run, and then Nord's Fury goes up to three. And if he had, he doesn't have three in, so he just take an additional action. My turn. I'm going to choose to do battle because the I'm going to go ahead and do battle. I have a total of a five. Plus C, so I got two. C no, I lost that C. May not be a good idea. I need cards though. I may save them for the final round. So I'm not going to do battle. I'm going to hold tight. I think I'm going to. I'm going to build. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my build action. You can build on any island for your temple that you have settlers on. You don't have to have control, you just got to have settlers there. So I'm going to build on the island where I'm having struggle maintaining influence. So I'm going to spend four, I mean five wood, brings me down to one, and I get to build a temple on this island. Temple's worth four influence. So that means I have seven influence to his five, which means I get the sea ruin back. And Nord gets a little more angry. He's up to four now. And I have an F run in my hand. So that means I get to add two more wood back to my resources. Collect two more wood. And I think that's it right there. We're good. So now the build action's done. Plus, I get an additional resource of my choice every time I do a resource collection now because I uncovered that. Once I uncover the boat, it's food, but when I uncover a temple, put it on the board, I get an additional resource of my choice every time. And that ends my turn. Now it's the Autumn's turn. He gets to collect two resources, and he doesn't get to take the special action, so he's going to collect wood. He's going to increase the fury by one, so Odin is up to six on his fury because that's only token he has. Wood goes up by one. He gets to place a settler on an island where his boat is. So this right here 
and that gives him a total of six to my seven so I'm still in control but barely and that ends his turn so I have movements left if I have two F's I can do a battle so I don't have one so I'm going to use this and I get to move my boat three so I have influence here when I leave it'll be tied influence which gives me control still so I'm going to go ahead and take a chance I'm going to move my boat let's see here I can move three spaces but I don't have any more settlers to place and I don't have enough iron to capture a village so um one two and I want to stop boat here three and we'll see how that works out for me I don't have influence or I'm debating you know what? I'm gonna stop here instead three now my influence is up to nine versus six and now it's and that ends my turn I have a sea run so I can move a settler from one island to another tied influence if I do that I'm gonna take the chance I'm gonna go here I'm gonna capture this F run which means Frey is a little more angry I don't know why they get angry when you capture the runes but they get angry and so now I have influence on that island barely the minute he gets to move someone around and it may it'll change influence it'll change a lot and that ends that action now it's Autumn's turn he gets to move his boat three plus three to F Island so I just one so the one where he can move here and take influence or he can move there and place three he moves to the nearest one where he doesn't have influence so it's going to be here so now he has influence plus he gets to drop three of his settlers there and I've just lost influence there so Frey gets a little more angry because he keeps changing hands and because he plays more than me he puts me back on the mat my final turn is I get to sell a boat so my influence is pretty much set right there for now I can move two spaces which is one two I can put a settle there and capture I'm going to do that so one two I want to drop pay one food to drop my settler that I got back I have influence of three to his two so I capture the in ruin symbol which brings Odin to seven now and I have two F's which means I can do battle I get five plus C so I get seven total for battle I'm going to battle for this card here and hopefully the Automa doesn't beat me and he got a five plus in so I had seven he has five six seven it's a tie so that means we both get our Valhalla boons so I'm gonna go ahead and place this card here and also this card goes back into the board area and we'll put his card right here so we'll start with his boons first he had the in so that means he gets to collect resources one wood one food two iron so we'll do one wood first he gets to move his chieftain boat around till he gets to to dislodge one of my boats and the closest one is here so he dislodges this I go to here and now I lose control of the island so he gets in the end stone putting Odin up to eight I really need to get it in ruin for battle Odin's gonna be the deciding factor for this battle but so now he gets one food so that means he gets to go up on the fury track for both Odin and Freya so Odin's up to nine now Freya is up to five he gets to go two iron so he gets to do another battle a he gets plus two so I can't battle because I'm out of cards so he is going to just go and flip it over where the closest he's going for the F and 9 because that's closest to his boat and he's on the bottom half of the map and so the deck goes against him the game and he gets a 
3, so he gets an F and 9. I'll put his upside down just so hopefully I forget what it is so it doesn't influence me to try to outmaneuver him there. He wins that battle. This card goes here. We'll put this card here. And he goes one more time on the board. There's nothing happens there, so that ends his turn. Now I get my boon. I had a C rune, so that allows me to take the boon action for Nord. And it says, sell each of your boats up to two times. If they dock at an island, they cannot raid villages, but they can deploy settlers. So I don't have any settlers to deploy, but I can sell the boat up to two times. And so I think I've lost control here. And if I go there, it's a tie. He maintains control. I have control there. I can do it two cells. There's no place I can really take control. I can't raid a village. I don't have the ore anyways for it. So I'm going to go ahead and one and two. I'm just going to dock here. So one, I'll just dock right here. Can't raid the village anyways. So I'll dock here. And that's my boon. Also, I forgot when I deployed to settle here earlier, I forgot to take one of the pay for wheat. So now the wheat is correct. I only have one wheat. But other than that, that ends my turn because I battled him. So now he gets his last chance. He can sell his boat three times to the closest C. Um, it'll be this C. Hopefully, he, let's see, he gets six influence. I have four, five, six. 8 influence. He's going to sell here one, because now he gets to deploy this is all messed up here His up to 3 he only has 1 left but he gets control of that C rune and we go up another one on fear track for Nord and now he's starting now the, the tables are starting to turn against me where I had the advantage now he has the advantage and that will end the era. I'm going to move the token down to era 3 and We'll be back to start era three, and I will go ahead and deal the cards out so you guys don't have to sit through that. All right, we're ready to begin the third and final era. Now, any attack on villages will cost three ore. So I've already selected my cards. I picked two cards that give me resources, three cards that let me build, and one card that lets me move a ship. And all the additional actions at the bottom don't let me get do anything else but gain resources except for the first one, which will allow me to move two, I mean one of my settlers to another location if I need to. So right now I'm going to collect resources. And for that I'm going to collect four resources. So I'm going to collect all wood. And then, if I have an F run, I get to collect wheat with a number uh, equal to the number of N runs I contain. I have one, two of those because I have the F. So I get to collect two wheat or food. That is my turn. Autumn, I guess, to go. I'll put his cards here so you can see. He gets to collect two resources. And he doesn't have, he gets to take the additional action. He doesn't have two C's. So this resets back to zero, and I've lost, already lost one wood. I lose one wood over that. So if I move the furthest one back first, so this goes twice. One, two. So first one, he gets to move his ship to one of my dock ships and dislodge it. So that kind of hurts, because now my ship is here. And... I lose control of that end because now he has a majority of influence. And then Odin goes a little bit higher on his anger level. His wrath. And now I move and then I moved to the second, which means I move the boat across the island to another location. To this chain. He captures that village. He places the next one, which means he gets to move two plus his three. So where would he go to? He has control here because I it ended in a tie when he left. The 
is 3, plus 2 is 5. I still have control. Even if he goes there, I have control. So he is going to... No place to go where he... So he's going to go back here just to keep control. And, well, he got to go... He goes across the line anyways. It doesn't really matter. So he's where he should be at. So he has influence control there. And that ends his turn. I get to go next. I'm going to collect three more resources. Actually, I'm not going to collect resources. I'm going to do a build action. So I'm going to do a build. And I forgot to get an extra resource each time I collect. So I'm going to add another food to that. Or actually, I'm going to add another wood to that. Then I'm going to spend seven wood to collect a temple. I'm going to put the temple on this island here. Now I have majority. I get the end back and Odin's wrath goes up a little bit more. Fury. So now I get two additional resources of my choice every time I do a resource collecting action. i got to remember to collect that. And I have an F run so I can get an additional food resource. And now it is Autumn's turn. He gets four resources. So he goes one. He get uh, one on the Fury track. He has one of each, so they all go up. One on the Fury track. Two. I lose a wood. Can't lose any more wood. I'm down to zero. But he gets to dislodge one of my ships. I don't have a ship that needs to be dislodged, so he just stays where he is, and that goes back down. This will go up one. This is number three. He gets to put a temple wherever his ship is. So he gets to put his temple right here because he's there. So we're sharing the temples on island. He takes influence again. So he gets the end run back. Odin goes up again to number 13. That island's the hot point right now. And... He gets to build one more. Oh, and I also go down one on wheat because he reached the end of the line. It starts him back over. And the third one will go up. And he goes one on the Fury track. He has two ends, so it'll be Odin to 15. It's going to be a lot of points whoever has the end runes for both cards and the actual rune symbols. My turn. I'm going to collect resources again. Collect three resources. I need wood, so I'm up to three on the wood track. If I have a sea room, which I do, I can move a settler from one location to the next. I'm going to go ahead and take the chance. I want to move this settler here. Let's see, four, five, six. If I put my boat there, give me eight. He has four or five. They give him seven. So I could probably get the end run back. So I'm going to do that. So I'm put it there. So if I get to move my boat, I'm going to put it there and hopefully take control. And that ends my turn. Autumn's turn again. I may have to do a fight. I should have did a fight with that last card. I wasn't thinking. He gets to collect three more resources. And he has two end runs, so he gets to collect a lot more resources. So he'll collect... One, he gets to dislodge a boat. There's no boat to dislodge. Nothing happens there. And that's a third resource. He moves his boat across the island to here. Now I have influence. I get the end run. And then he gets to collect three wood. First one, he gets to increase the fury track. He has one of each, so 16 for Odin, 7 for Nord, and 7 for Freya goes up on the wood track again. He gets to move, dislodge, like I said, can't dislodge a boat. But I lose another wood. That hurts. He starts back at zero. And last one is he gets to dislodge a boat, but he can't do it. So he stays where he is. I don't have a boat anchored anywhere. So we're good. That ends his turn. My turn, I get to well, I can't build. I can't. I can't build a boat. I forgot to get my two resources for building, so wood's up to four.
but I want to build, I got two temples out, so I got to build a boat. So I'm going to build a boat. I'm going to place it, drop it right in the middle here. And then I have an end run so I can collect two, it looks like iron. Two iron, which brings me to two. And that ends my turn. Now it's Bottomless turn. He gets to move two. He doesn't have any on the board, so he can move two settlers from one island to the next. I have control of this island. And I have control of this island. If he moves these two, he doesn't have any control, so moving these two doesn't hurt him because he's not going to get control back. And then he takes control of that F run. And if Freya goes up again on the track, and he has one, two, three, he has enough Fs that he gets to take out one of my settlers off an island that he is at. So that puts that settler back on the board. And when I built that boat, I should have spent two wood. So there, now, now that's right. I'm going to build a, another boat. I'm going to spend the, nope, I can't because I need three wood. So I can't do any build action. So just playing this card doesn't help. But I do have an end run, which allows me to get, well, either way it doesn't work for me. I'll get one wood. Because I have the end run. Bottomless turn. This is his fifth turn. He gets to move his boat twice. He's going to move towards an end run. He's going to go here. Four, five, six, seven to my six. He gets the end run back. Oh, man. Go up another one. And now it's my turn, which means now I have to. I can move three. I can go here and get an end run. I can also go here and get the end run. It's six to seven. Hopefully he gets to move the boat again. So I'm going to gamble. I'm going to move down to here. I'm going to take influence on this island. Take that end run back. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do battle instead. Uh, so I can't get anything. F, C, N. I can get a C and an N. But I only get, if I do battle, I only have one F. That's a four. I'm not, I should have done battle. I kept overlooking battle. So, it is what this is. I'm going to get the end run. Like I said, capture that. Get to drop another worker to help kind of add control. And then because I have a C run, I get another iron. And because I didn't have enough iron, I could have gone to a village, but I didn't have enough iron. I can't attack after the fact. So that's my last turn. So the Ottawa gets a turn. And if all goes well, he gets to move. So let's see. Two resources. If he has three Cs, he doesn't. So he has to collect a total of two resources. So he collects the wood and he moves. That's good. He moves across. He already has influence there. I got influence back, so I do get the end run. That benefits me. And then he gets to move food up one and that will end his turn and that ends the third era so now we're going to go into scoring okay we're going to begin scoring the only things in this game that count for points are the end runs you possess and the end runs on favor cards that you have in your control so and I laid the um, end runs from the gods mats in order from highest to lowest on the most points so in F and C. N was the highest, F was the second, and C was the third. So we'll start with the N runs that we own. N gets, for the ones you own, on, they start in this section here. I have two, so I get 12 points total, six for each one. So I'll move up to 12. He does not have any N runs. The next is F. F is five points for each one. He has both F, so he goes up 10. And then we both have a C, so we both got four, po four points each. So I go to 16, and he goes to 14. And so that takes care of the end runs. Now we count cards. I failed to do enough battles, so I didn't get enough cards. So I have two Cs. 
C was the lowest, so I got three points for each C. So I got a total of six more points. That brings me to 22. Adama has an F run. He gets four points for that F run, so it brings him to 18. And he has an N run, which gives him five more points, which brings him to 23. So bottom line, the Adama beat me 22 to 23 for the final score. Um, my failure was... I just I didn't get enough battle cards. I should have I should have did some more battles. I could have got got a couple more, and it probably would have helped me out. But for the most part, it is what it is. The Ottawa beat me by one point. It was a close game. Can't complain. And we'll do our thoughts here in a minute. Tiny Epic Vikings. I enjoyed the game. It was easy to learn. Coming off of dungeons, the symbology was not a problem versus dungeons. Once you've played this game a few times and you learn the symbology, the game goes smooth. If you're playing and you understood the rules and everything, you could probably blow through an entire game in 20 minutes easily. That's why I like about its fast setup and fast breakdown. It's the only game that comes with a board within Game Link Games under the Tiny Epic series. So that made a difference. You didn't have a lot of cards to deal with there. I do enjoy the cards of Tiny Epic uh, series because it makes it different every time. But you really didn't need it for this game because you had your islands, you knew what you had to do, get it and go. The islands in the world don't change position. So same in this game here. Um, and like I said, I like the fact it was area control, worker placement, a little bit of, uh, not really deck building, but card selecting. And I like the fact that you can have control of an island and think you're winning, and all of a sudden you lose control of that island and it goes to someone else in just one turn. And it can go back and forth like that turn after turn. So I, that makes the game more entertaining because when you think you have the advantage, you can lose it really quick off of just one play of the card. So this game is really fun. I would recommend it to anyone who's getting into games because if you're getting into solo games, this is very easy to learn. And you just, like I said, the rule book is simple, easy to understand, and the, it breaks it down to a level that there's no confusion. The only couple of things I would recommend for the rule book was you know, when you get to the end of the Automa's resource tracking, you start over. Do you, I mean, how do you, do you continue all the other resources first, or does it keep going until they're equal back up again? They just didn't explain that in the rule book, so I just played it the way I thought would best work. But other than that, enjoy the game. Now, if I missed it, please let me know. I've read through the rule book a few times and I could not see what to do once you get the end of the resource track. Do you start over and keep doing that same resource until it catches up, or do you do all the other resources until you get the end also? But it is, it is what it is. I really enjoyed the game, and it was fun. Thank you for joining me again at Gaming Solo. It is truly an honor that you guys take the time out of your day and your busy schedule to watch what I produce. If you enjoy what you see and you want to um, give some constructive criticism or some comments, please drop them below. And let me know what I can do to improve this channel or what you like about this channel. I've made some changes. I'm not doing the graphics of the cards up close anymore because I think you can see them on screen but if you don't like that change let me know and if I get enough people let me know that they prefer to go back to the old way I'll do that also just and if you don't want to leave comments go ahead and email me at gamingsolo101 at gmail.com and you can talk to me privately that way and it's just an email direct to me no one else gets to see it but myself and once again thank you for joining me at Gaming Solo if you get a chance go to the Solo Board Gamers group there's also Tiny Epic Fans for the Tiny Epic Games from Game of Games. Check their Facebook out also. And there's so much information going back and forth. I'm sure they appreciate your dialogue right along with them. And once again, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And uh, let me know in the comments below what I can do to make this channel better. And thank you for joining me in another Gaming Solo playthrough.